Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be episode 18 of Building Feed. This is going to be another long video. It's a compilation of everything that I've gotten done in the past two weeks, all condensed into one video, same as the last couple that I've put out for Feed. And I think I'm going to have this and one other video that is going to come out in a few weeks after Brick Fair and everything, and that's going to be like the whole big finale with everything that I've gotten done leading up to Brick Fair, finishing the mock, and then everything that happens at Brick Fair, that kind of thing. So there's going to be this, which is going to be a 30 minute video, kind of the secondary finale, if you will. But anyway, basically this week, I mainly focused on the arch building that the Nabu forces kind of charge through as they're attacking the Trade Federation, trying to take back their home planet from invasion. So there's a lot of progress that goes into that. I got in a few orders. Daniel made a ton of progress. There's a lot going on in this video. But before we get started, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on anything related to Theed. So with that all out of the way, let's get right into it. Starting off this week, I do have another Bricklink order. Hopefully this is the last one that I have to buy for Theed. But we'll go ahead and open this up and see what I got. The main thing that I got were 200 of these 1x2x2 bricks. And I got these just to make sure that I had enough bricks to finish the buildings. So hopefully that will carry me through and I won't have to order any more pieces for those. And then over here, I got some 1x3 and one by two and one by one plates, just to make sure that when I'm doing like smaller details and filling in small gaps, I'll have enough of those because I was starting to run low on them. So I just wanted to make sure that I had enough to finish out the mock. And then over here, I got some one by six plates. And this is because when I'm doing bigger gaps or just larger sections, it's nice having just big plates that I can fill that in with instead of having to use like three one by two plates or two one by threes. It's nice to just have a bigger, longer plate and they were pretty cheap. So I grabbed those. And then over here, I just got some clear one by one plates for the water. And then the last piece, this is not actually for the, this is for a collab that I'm doing with Bricks Lab, but these are the pearl dark gray macaroni elbow tube pieces. And these things are, as I said, going to be for something unrelated to Thede. So hopefully that will be out in the next coming weeks and you guys will be able to see that. All right, so we have another haul. This one is a complete surprise. Daniel told me to go check my mailbox. So when I got home, I ran out and looked and there was a package from Daniel, but I have no idea what's in this. So let's go ahead and just open this up. Okay, so it looks like he sent me a bunch of 1x4 bricks in tan. Oh, actually, he sent me a lot of stuff. Oh, some panels, which I didn't have before, so that's really, really awesome. Some more of the 1x4 bricks in tan. A ton of 1x1 cheese slopes in tan. And then a bunch of the trans black tiles, the 1x2 tiles. So I honestly have no idea what prompted this, but this is really, really awesome. These bricks will definitely go a long way to help me finish up the buildings. And these panels are also gonna be cool. This is probably gonna make it a lot easier to make the archway because it's an octagon. So these are definitely gonna help out making the nice corners. And then also obviously cheese slopes just go a long way and they just are, you can't really have enough of them. So that's amazing. And I don't think this is gonna be enough of the trans black tiles to finish the mock, obviously, which is totally fine, but definitely going to help out. And it, ooh, it actually looks like he sent me some of these little dark brown flower pot pieces. So I'm going to use these. We're gonna have them all throughout the mock as little flower pot plants, just to kind of liven up the city. So I'm actually really excited about this. So let's go ahead and get started building. All right, so I started working on the arch building and the two columns on either side are octagons, but basically I'm going to make them hexagons because you're not really going to see the backside and it's going to save me time and bricks. 
So what I've been working on is making that shape. Basically, this is going to be the front wall, and I'll talk about the window design in a second, but this is going to be the front wall, and then we have the sides kind of angled off, and then attached to here is going to be another wall going straight back. So this is going to be that perpendicular to this front wall. So this is just gonna be on the regular stud lay of plates. Same with this wall back here. And then I'm going to make just a straight flat back section because like I said, nobody's gonna see it. So basically this was my plan. And the way that I made it was with some plates at the bottom or tiles in dark tan because there's kind of like this trim that goes around the bottom of it. Somewhat similar to the explosion building, how I have that border trim around the bottom, just this is in dark tan. So I built that and then up here is more of that snot and then I transitioned to regular bricks going up vertically. So that was a little bit of a fun thing to try and figure out there, but I figured it out and everything works fine. And then the next thing was figuring out how to make this corner section. So on the bottom here, there's just tiles that meet. And on this side, there's no studs behind the tiles. And on this side, there are. So when they meet back there, you just kind of see dark tan showing through, but they obviously meet up pretty nice and flush. And then the two cheese slopes on either side here meet up nicely. And this has plates behind it. And this side doesn't. So I'm not really sure what this angle is, but it works out pretty well. So then to connect, I'm using all of these hinge plates because these things are so much stronger. As you can see, this thing is pretty strong. It's pretty sturdy and I can now kind of not worry about it bending or being fragile and snapping off. So that's why I went to use these. I should have used these all throughout this mock in all of the rounded areas, but better late than never. This is a lot stronger than the rest of the parts of this mock, especially the round building. That thing is a nightmare compared to this. But basically, that's the way that I'm going to do it. And then moving on to the windows. The window design on this building is kind of cool. It's two very tall windows with arched tops. And it's hard to do this in Lego, but they did come out with the new arch piece, which is the one by two arch. And as you can see here, this is the middle and I don't have any in tan right now, so I ordered some, but this is one in dark bluish gray. And then they do have corners, so I left the back side open right here so I can stick those in, just swap them out for the headlight bricks that I just have standing in for now. So hopefully those parts come in pretty soon and I can just kind of pop them in. And I did go ahead and add in some clear tiles and plates back there, even though in the actual movie it's just black, there isn't lights. I think it would look weird if I did that. So I'm going to continue on the lighting theme of this mock and just have the orange and yellow lights shining through the windows. But that is kind of the base so far. Now I'm hoping that I can just kind of build a straight wall back here, have it all line up nicely, and then make another section just in the back. And then this will kind of push right up to the back of the base plates. So I'm gonna see how that works. And that is basically the framework of the beginning of the arch. Now moving on to the arch, this is kind of sagging in the middle right now because I don't have anything back there supporting it, but this is the design that I kind of came up with. Basically in the movie, there's the dark tan trim, kind of similar to the border on the octagons. So there's dark tan trim, and I don't love how blocky this is. Ideally, I would have made this a little bit more gradual of a step, but it is accurate to the movie. I was thinking of using some two by two tiles attached onto snot bricks, kind of like this, and just doing that kind of trim, but I'm running low on the snot bricks and I need a lot of them making the octagons. So I decided against that. I think this actually looks pretty good considering the source material. So this is the arch and what I'm going to do is obviously this will get supported so it won't sag in the middle but it's going to be raised up a few bricks. So when I put minifigures and the speeder under it, it'll actually look pretty good. So this isn't how I'm going to do it when I actually put everything together, but this is about what the height is going to be. So if I take a minifigure, you can see it is a pretty big arch and there's enough room in the corner for them to be kind of hiding out and blasting at the droids through there. 
And if I take the speeder, it fits in there plenty of space. It's not hitting the top. And even with the engines out, it still has plenty of clearance on both sides. This is what the arch building is somewhat going to look like. So I think this is actually looking really nice. It's coming together pretty fast, which is good because at this point, I'm cutting it down to the wire. As you know, I didn't have a video last week because I was just trying to focus on building and I didn't want to stop and waste time editing and filming stuff. So basically, this is where I'm at with the arch building. The nice thing is now the arch is kind of done, so I don't really have to worry about that. I will have to extend it back, but I'm going to use some hinges and tiles and I'll kind of attach these all like that type thing with a bunch of hinges and plates. So that will kind of trace out the underside of the arch because the underside is actually tan. It's not the dark tan. And then I will have to build some stud domes, but those are pretty easy. Once I figure out the size, I can just quickly kind of make those to fit. So we're actually looking pretty good right now. All right, so as you guys saw in the time lapse, I finally connected the arch to the main octagon, or as I'm building a hexagon shape. Basically, the first thing that I did was this. This is basically so that these side panels are rigid now. So I have another one of those hinge plates attached to a bunch of jumper plates that kind of stick out and clamp down from the top and the bottom. So now these are both rigid in place, which is good because now they're structural. So I could attach this arch piece onto the side. And the other thing I did was some more jumper plates over here, but I made this big long Technic that connects all of this together. So now I have this long beam going sideways. It's attached to some plates that run out from the middle. And basically the reason I wanted to do this was so that I could have that 90 degree angle. So now this side is on the same stud layout as this, although it is a half a plate. So I'll have to figure that out whenever I connect this thing. But basically if I kind of flip this around to where you guys can kind of look at it, I have a bunch of jumper plates underneath here that attach onto those big plates. And then over here, I have a bunch more jumper plates. And another part that came in clutch when I was building this were the T-bars. I used one here that attaches this side into this side because it kind of goes in to this one by two snot brick on either sides of that. And then I could finally figure out a way to connect the bottom here because for the longest time I had the top connected, but the bottom wasn't connected and it was really unstable. So I finally figured out a way to do that, which is basically just some clips, which actually worked out really nicely. So now everything is all kind of connected and strong. This is really nice because now I kind of have everything starting to be figured out here. So I can now continue to build this side just regular straight. And then I'll kind of try to mimic or mirror or something this connection point on the other side and then I can have the full thing and also the nice thing is because this is a half plate offset on this side it's also going to be a half plate offset on this side so once these kind of come and meet together this back section will work out because obviously two times a half is a whole all right so quick progress update I went ahead and copied what I had done all the way over on this left side. So now I have both of the bases. The only thing that I have left to do is this wall right here that is going to connect the other side of the bridge or the arch. 
So everything else is pretty much done, which is really, really nice. And then the other thing is for the inside, I did go ahead and add in the tiles as the inside or the bottom of the arch. And there, it's a little bumpy, but I don't really mind because you're not really going to be looking at it. And this is basically just so that if I take pictures of minifigures kind of from, I don't know, maybe that angle, it just looks nice. So really happy with this though. I decided to actually try and use some flex tubes and it worked out really nicely. I was going to use hinges, but that was going to cause a bunch of problems and make it really difficult. So what I did was just put some headlight bricks and some plates, as you can kind of see there, and then attach the tiles to that. And then if I flip this all the way behind here, this one has tan on the back, but I'm going to go ahead and switch it out for dark gray to save tan bricks. But I tried to kind of match the curve with some tan bricks, the slopes, and I don't really mind that there's gaps and stuff because this is the back and nobody's really going to see this. It is pretty crazy. This thing is like a gray base plate and a half. So it's huge. It's going to stick out like half a gray base plate as well. So it's like absolutely massive. This is definitely going to be the biggest structure on the mock. But I really like the way it's looking. At this point, the only thing I'm waiting on are those arch pieces. So hopefully those will be here. So I can go ahead and kind of push this back. And I did have a little bit more progress. This was actually done by my girlfriend. She helped me out while I was working on this. So all of those tiles that Daniel sent me, I put to use. This space plate is almost done. I did leave some of these spaces open just so I'll go through and add in studs and just one by one plates and tiles. So don't worry about that. But we have this one done. This one is almost halfway done. This one is fully done. And I went ahead and added in this nice little rock, which is kind of cool. I'll kind of just stick this where it makes sense, but that one's fully done and this one's fully done. And the only other thing left is this little 16 by 16 base plate. So I am like around 500 tiles short, but that is way better than the 1300 that I was originally going to have to buy. So this will make it so much easier going forward. And there also won't be as much to do at the convention now. So I'm really, really happy about that. And I did get in another package. Unfortunately, this is not the arch pieces, but it is the lights, which is really, really nice. This is a Light My Bricks package. So I'll open this up. And I'll go ahead and cut through this too. Okay, so I got another battery box so that the second row of base plates can just be all on its own string and I won't have to worry about disconnecting as many things. So that's really nice. And then I got some more extension boards, four more of those and the connecting cables. I actually found two of these, so I probably didn't need to buy them, but it's okay. Can never go wrong with having enough of those. And then the other thing is I decided to go ahead and spoil myself and buy two light up lightsabers. These are the blue and green lightsabers. I'm going to use these for Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn in the mock and it's just going to add in another level of lighting, especially when the lights are turned off. Just having the lightsabers glowing is going to look so cool. So really excited about that. And now the nice thing about having this in is I can finally build the road. Before I was waiting to have these in because the way that I make the road, you kind of have to string the lights as you make it because you can't really go back in and add in the lights. It doesn't really work. So I'm glad to have this all in because now I can build the road. All right, so I've made a lot more progress since the last time I showed you guys. Basically, I went ahead and completely changed the back to dark bluish gray and I made the bridge that goes across the top here. And I started working on the doorway over here. It's a little funky because for some reason there's like a quarter of a plate offset from this side to this side. Probably because of the way that I made this. On the front, this is all snot in one section. But when I tried to make it even, like down the middle, you can see there's a plate offset here. A half plate. So that is causing some issues. I'm using brackets over here to try and kind of figure that out. But basically, I finished this, I put tiles and plates, so now this is actually pretty strong. 
I can kind of pick it up and it doesn't really bow too much in the middle, which is really nice. All right, so this is what it looks like from the front. I fully went through and connected this side and obviously this side was already connected. And then as I said, I built this up more and added on the bridge. And I did this kind of dark tan trim, similar to what I have going around here. And I also did tiles on the top because in the movie there is some dark tan at the top of kind of where the railing would be. So I just stuck with that and I think it also helps with the dark tan kind of trim and border that we have going around the rest of it. I'm making a lot of progress. I think I should be on track to finish in time for Brick Fair. Really what I'm focusing on is this building. I really want to finish this because after that it's just doing the floor and if I really set my mind to it and just sit down for a couple hours I think I should be able to knock that out. And then I also have an idea of just making like an elevated section with buildings on top of it because Daniel did that in his section, which I'll show you guys. And it really, really looks nice. And it's also something that you see a lot of, especially in Battlefront 2. So I think I'm going to do that just to add in some more height to the mock. But as for now, this is what it looks like. And just quickly, actually, before I move on to something else, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like kind of more from a minifigures perspective. So I went ahead and threw in the flash speeder and some minifigures so you can see they have plenty of room in there. And also, if I tilt it up like this, you can kind of see the underside of the arch with all those tiles, which looks really nice. If I did want to take pictures like this from this angle for some reason, I know that there are tiles back there and it's going to look way better than having anti-studs or something like that. So this is what it looks like with all of the, you know, minifigures and the speeder and everything there together. And I think it scales really well. This is actually kind of a perfect scale. It's still really, really big, as you can see but it's small enough where they just fit kind of nicely in the arch and it doesn't seem overscaled or underscaled or anything. I do think it's a little bit smaller than it was in the movie, but as I said, I think it scales well because of the kind of limited amount of space that I have to work with. So this thing looks really nice and I can't wait to see what it looks like in the mock. I did get in the package that I've been waiting for. This should be the arches. The store I bought this from is Studby, which is kind of cool. They have like a little seal that they put on their packing envelopes. So go ahead, open this up and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so obviously it's a small order, only two parts, but these are the corners. And when you kind of put them on their side, you can see it just looks like that one little side of the arch. And then these are the middles that will obviously go in the middle of the windows. So happy to finally have these in and then I can put them in and see what the windows look like on the arch. So this is probably all of the progress that I'm going to get to this video. I spent a lot more time just building up this section here and this here. This is probably going to be the height of the building. And then obviously I'll have the domes on either side. I would like to make it a little taller but I'm really starting to run low on the one by two cheese slope that I ordered as well as the longer one by plates in tan to make up these sections for the corners. So rather than trying to figure out how to do it differently or just rob pieces from other places, I'm going to just try and make this the height, see how it looks. And then if it really looks bad, then I'll try and figure it out from there. But I'm hoping that this will look good. And then the other thing is I did go and put in all of those arches to make the windows. And I'm really, really happy with this design. It looks very similar to what we see in episode one. Even if it's not a huge detail, it still means a lot to me. And I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And also in the movie, there's nothing on this side. This is just blank. And then there's some windows on the top floor, I think. But I think that would look weird. It would look like I either just ran out of parts or for some reason decided not to put windows there so i'm gonna make it symmetrical and kind of stray a little bit from the source material and have windows on the first three sides here on both sides and then one window just centered on the top floor and i think that's gonna look better it's gonna look symmetrical more like that's kind of what it's supposed to be and then the other thing is this dark tan is actually a little bit too high this should be in line with here and I probably could go in and add in a little bit more space here, bump up the window, maybe add in a couple bricks here just to kind of make that line up. But as I said, I'm running out of pieces and I'm definitely starting to run out of time. So I'm going to leave it. I think it looks fine. I don't really think it matters, honestly. It would be kind of nice to have that be just straight and flat, but 
the way that I was making this, there was really no way to do that. So now I'd have to go through and redesign this entire section and I really don't have time for that. So I'm just gonna leave it. And then the other tiny little thing is in the movie, there are these tiny little white kind of tooth shaped lights or designs in the side of the building. So I went ahead and just added in those pieces because it's a little detail and it kind of breaks up that open space. So this is the arch building. I think I left myself in a pretty good space for going forward. I think I should definitely have enough time to kind of sit down and build all the rest of the parts of this mock that I haven't gotten to yet. But that is all the progress that I got done this week. So taking a look at Daniel's side of the mock, in this first picture you can see he actually is making the bridge wider. Before it was a very steep curve, so he extended it and made it a little bit longer, added in a row of base plates to accommodate it, but I think this is going to look a lot more like Theed, which is good. And then here you can see he figured out how to meet it into the rest of the mock. Basically there's just a cheese grater slope on the ground level or the level that you would put tiles on for the water. And then behind it, there are two cheese grater slopes that meet up with the backside. And then you can just put a plate and then tiles on top of it. And it goes right into the floor and it looks really, really nice. So I'm going to be mirroring this and putting it on the edge of my plate so that his bridge will meet up seamlessly with mine. And then getting a wider view of his mock, I'm so excited to see these put next to each other. His looks so cool. This is the elevation change that I was talking about earlier, where you can see the tan railing, and then obviously it's built up a few bricks. It adds so much depth and height contrast in the mock, which is desperately needed. Otherwise, it would be a very plain gray flat base with just tan kind of going around the edges. So I'm definitely going to be taking this idea and adding it into my second portion of the mock. But this just looks so good. I mean, the buildings that he has on there look fabulous. And the angles that he has in the railing, the border going around the road, it looks so cool. And then here you can see the beginnings of a building. This looks really nice as well. It's got a bunch of arches. I think he was basing this directly off a building that you see in Battlefront 2. And then here's a little bit more of an update picture. You can see the nice column detail that he has built in to where those arches are. Looks really nice. And then he was also messing around with some awnings, which is a great idea. So this looks really cool. And then here you can see a different building. This is actually a two level or two tiered building. As you can see, he has yellow lights going on, but it has two different levels for the roof which looks really nice. This is kind of similar to what I did with my round building, except obviously mine was a little bit different being the round section and the dome and then just kind of the straight other side. But he has two different heights for the roof. And then here you can see it completed. This is a really cool design. I really like this, the arches, the terrace going on at the bottom, and then obviously the greenery kind of growing up around it and then in the windowsills looks really nice. So. This is what it looks like also with the lights on shining through. It looks really, really cool. This mock is going to be so interesting to see with all the lights on, especially when the lights in the convention hall are turned off and all you can see are the lights inside the mocks. Definitely going to look really, really nice. And then this picture is a older building that he had. I put this in, I think, my last video, but this is a really nice looking building just side by side with his newer kind of two-tiered building really really looks nice but this is the progress that he's gotten done so far and it looks really fantastic so i'm definitely going to try to kind of make my second half of the mock look a little bit more similar to his and i think he's going to also do the same kind of thing and make ours look like they kind of belong together and are part of the same city all right guys that is going to wrap up episode 18 of building feed as I said, it was a long video with a lot of progress. I almost finished the arch building, which is a huge step forward. I have nine days as of me recording this video. By the time you guys see this, it'll be even less. So that is a lot to get done in a short amount of time. I still have to do the road. I still have two buildings that I have to do. And depending on how it looks with the raised up section and how much time I have left, I might just make one other building, but I want to do two. I think it will look better that way. 
But anyway, that is everything for this video. If you guys made it to the end of the video, leave a like. It lets me know that you guys like the video and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on anything related to Theed. And if you guys are interested in the lights that I'm using in this mock, they are Light My Bricks and I have a link that will give you $10 off your first purchase with Light My Bricks. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the finale. Goodbye.